Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2L. We're going to think about the relationship between mutations and natural selection. We'll talk about clearing up some misconceptions that the chances that a mutation is going to benefit an organism don't affect the chance that the mutation will arise, the environment doesn't affect which mutations arise, and organisms haven't evolved mechanisms to control what kinds of mutations they get or when they get them. Now, beginners often think that a need for change causes mutations happen to happen, that mutations happen because the environment changes. This makes sense. Natural selection optimizes function. Why didn't natural selection act on the ability to evolve, so to prevent death and extinction? People often think that even a desire for change can cause mutations to happen. Um, there are people who will sell you um, tools purporting to be able to reprogram your DNA. Here's a big list of CDs. You can buy all these CDs online, but none of them are actually going to tell you how to change your DNA because you can't do that. So we've talked about Many factors influence when mutations happen. Many factors influence what kinds of mutation happen. But one thing that doesn't influence when mutations happen or what kind of mutations happen is the effect that the mutation will have on the organism's ability to survive and reproduce. The effect on the organism's fitness is not a factor in determining what kinds of mutations happen. Mutations happen by chance, and then natural selection selects from among those mutations. So mutations arise randomly with respect to their functional consequences. They can't be directed. The cell has no way to do this. Why not? Why didn't natural selection evolve ways to direct mutations? It would certainly be beneficial natural so if we had ways to prevent the bad mutations and promote the good mutations. Well, there's two reasons. First, the processes that cause mutations have no way to know the functions of the DNA sequences that they change. DNA polymerase replicates DNA. It knows nothing about the functions of the sequences that it replicates. Introns, exons, junk DNA, genetic parasites, DNA polymerase can't tell them apart. It replicates them all, treats them all equally. It has no way it could ever tell them apart. Second, cells have no way to predict, even if it could tell what the sequences do, there's no way to tell which changes would be beneficial. A cell would have to understand its environment. It would have to understand the future. Cells are just collections of molecules. They have wonderful molecular machines in them, but they can't see the future. They can't test their environment. So we might think that, well, good mutations happen more often, but that's because we're misled by natural selection. So mutations are arising at random. We have good mutations, which are rare. We have mutations that don't change, changes that don't change the genotype, don't change the phenotype. We have harmful mutations. They're all arising by chance. And then natural selection comes in. And what does it do over evolutionary time? It increases the frequency of mutations that are beneficial, mutations that don't have any effect stick around, it eliminates the mutations that are harmful. So what we see when we look at the organisms around us, we preferentially see the beneficial mutations, not the harmful mutations. We don't see all the mutations that arise unless we look carefully as a geneticist in research. Otherwise, we only see the effects of the mutations that persist. Now, here's a question, and I want to word this question carefully. Here's a gene. Let's say this is a gene that a plant, codes of a protein that a plant uses to take up nitrogen. 
And here are four of the many possible mutations. Here are four places where a mutation could occur in this gene. There's many other mutations could occur at many other positions, but we're just considering four that have different effects on the phenotype. If the plant is growing in soil with insufficient nitrogen, which of these mutations is most likely to occur? The mutation at position A, which activates the promoter, a mutation at position B, which creates a premature stop codon, a mutation at position C, which doesn't change the function of the protein at all, it's a silent mutation, or a mutation at position D, which actually changes the protein in a way that improves the efficiency of nitrogen uptake. So considering just these four positions of the many positions in the gene, which of these four mutations is most likely to occur? And if you followed what we just said, all of these mutations are equally likely to occur because the processes that give rise to mutations can't discriminate on the basis of their consequences for the function of the gene or the function of the organism. Now, I want to take a minute to think about the evolution of mutation rates. Why do we have the mutation rates that we have? We talked about mutation rates in an earlier lecture in this module. Why aren't mutation rates zero if most mutations are harmful? Why aren't they higher so we get more beneficial mutations? And, well, factors we have to consider are first that almost all new mutations are neutral or harmful. New mutations are rarely beneficial. We've said this a bunch of times. Second, preventing mutations is expensive for the cell. DNA polymerase hardly ever makes mistakes, but if it's going to be even more careful, it would have to go slower have to spend more time proofreading, saying, did I, like a obsessive compulsive, did I check that base enough times? Maybe I should go back and check it one more time. Well, I'm not absolutely sure, so I'll throw that base out and try again. This error checking gets very expensive for the cell. If there were no beneficial mutations, well, that we can, from our perspective, we'll say, well, that would be bad because adaptation would stop, Species would go extinct because they couldn't change. But natural selection doesn't care. Natural selection doesn't care whether adaptation happens or not. Natural selection doesn't care whether species go extinct. Natural selection is just a passive process that happens because we have heritable genetic variation. It's inevitable. And so, mutation rates do evolve, they are a product of natural selection to find the best mutation rate for the organism. But the factors that natural selection considers are the cost of preventing the mutations and the harm that the mutations do. If there was no harm, the cell wouldn't bother preventing mutations at all. If the harm is really high, it's worth investing more resources in preventing mutations. These are the factors that determine what mutation rates natural selection has left us with. It's not the beneficial mutations or causing adaptation or saving species for extinction. These factors play very little, if any, role in determining mutation rates. So what we've done, we've addressed a big potential misunderstanding. The idea that somehow environmental effects can cause particular mutations to happen. They can't. This will also be important when we think about cancer genes because there's a lot of sense that, oh, maybe it's my fault that this happened. But in fact, that's not true. We have no control over which mutations happen. The mutations that we see are a special subset of the ones that arise, and that's because harmful mutations are eliminated by natural selection. The mutations that we see are a biased subset containing all the beneficial mutations and a lot of the neutral mutations, few of the harmful mutations. Finally, mutation rates are set by natural selection 
To minimize harmful changes, balancing that with the costs of preventing mutations, not to promote beneficial ones. Coming up next, we're going to think about the mutational events that create new genes. I hope to see you there.